Well, I'm very eager to begin to step into these cards because we've gotten the chance to talk about where the set's coming from, what's in the set, and now I just want to see some damn cards. So awesome. let's go into the very first one. This is the very first time. I'm going to look over at my card monitor. Let's see if it happens. Okay. Right, here we go. Hips. Voila! <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hit me with a zero mana one one neutral? I mean, let's just know that right. this is, I, I'm, I'm sure the cutest art in the set. It's got to be. I think you're right. Will we see any snow flipper penguins die in videos today? You know, I let's. I I won't spoil anything. Will, will, you're a, will you're a, a wise monster man. who's running production put a video of snow flipper penguins it would take dying a monster. one after the right. other? It would. It would be My horrible. God. Yeah, no, that we'll, would be appalling. We'll skip that. That sounds a little brutal. So tell me a little <laughs> bit about the zero mana one one beast. This reminds me, uh, obviously, of the zero mana one one murloc right. that can actually have some interesting synergies when combined with you know steward of darkshire, right. give you a little extra momentum for your war leader. Right. Tell me about the design of this particular one. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So the the tag beast, right? The minion type beast can do a lot of things like the murloc did for the zero cost one one for murloc. Uh, yeah, and this card's also interesting because it it can actually improve hunter without even being in your deck. One of the times that I'm happiest to see this yeah. is with Deathstalker Rexar's Hero Power when you're doing Build a Beast, when you're making your Zombie Beast. Oh, this it's shows up a adds plus no one, cost, plus one. right? Exactly. And when you say only have four mana left over, which is the cost of the, maybe the other beast that you picked, this means you'll be able to play that beast this turn and get plus one plus one. So it's yeah, it's almost like a buff to Hunter without even needing to run it, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I feel like this has been increasingly emerging. I think back to, uh, you know, the Hydrologist. Mm -hmm. There's only five secrets in Paladin. Right. And therefore, in Standard, in Standard, forgive me, in Standard. Sorry, Wild Players. There's only th <laughs> those five in Standard that you need to worry about. Right. And so, even though Repentance is not a hard run card, Redemption right. is not really a hard run card, you can get situations where these are actually valuable. And we've seen Eye for an Eye be instrumental right. against mages in order to have them yep. pop their own. Against Ice Block, yeah. Yeah, go right through it. So, I mean, is this more so geared towards that type of logic, having more Discover options? Yeah, it's it's interesting to be part of Discover, but it also can do uh, kind of what the Murloc did, right? There's a lot of Beast Matters, obviously, in, you know, in Druid, but mostly in Hunter, where having a Beast out early can, you know, your, your Hyena can grow faster, all these types of things can matter earlier. Uh, which also yeah, yeah. which also can help. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how this one plays out as well. Because I mean, Alley Cat looks relatively innocuous mm -hmm. with two one ones. Right. But that is like right, the gold example. Yeah. First two turns right. for a hunter that immediately goes straight into the scavenging hyena and it just goes out of control from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love the golden on this. He's surfing down the slopes with on his surfboard. So. <laughs> oh my god! Do it's I get amazing. to see it's that, amazing. or is this another? Is this another map? No, I guess tease? that's a tease. I guess. That's okay, that's, <laughs> that's good. That's two. That's two thus far. <laughs> All right, let's head into card number two. Awesome. And it's a rare. Yeah, this is a rogue, rogue weapon. I see. Shadow blade. Yeah. Ah, adding in more and more rogue weapons, I see. Because, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about, like, where are the right. rogue weapons right. yeah. ever since the blade flurry nerf happened. <clears throat> and this, I mean, rogue has a really hard time healing at all. Right. Yeah, right this fill, yeah, this fills some some holes for rogue, right? It's tough yeah. to compete with the rogue hero power, actually, making a weapon. You need a very good weapon to justify it in your deck. Right. And I'm excited about this. I think this does that. We've seen three cost, three two weapons in the past be good enough to run when they have yeah. good powers. Uh, this is quite good, right? Not take any damage when you're finishing off a bigger minion, right? Finishing off that 7-7 seven, seven that you maybe send your minion into first yeah. is a big deal, yeah. right? That's seven points of health. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, too, if you're facing things like the Leper Gnome, because it's for the turn, so you don't take their death rattle damage. So there's, it comes up every once in a oh, while where you're not, wow. yeah, you're able to kind of plan your turn where you're like, huh. I'm actually not going to get hit by that death rattle. So yeah, kind of neat. Wow. Yeah, I can also imagine this is going to be really nice. I feel like a lot of the this style of rogue is just big swing turns, mm -hmm. where you have nothing on the board. And I can imagine now you play the Shadow Blade, you play the SI7 agent to ping, and then hit a five health minion to kill it, to clear right. the board, and you still haven't taken any damage. Right, you still have your weapon, still have your agent, and yeah. damage. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. How, do, how does this wind up faring in, in some of the existing archetypes that we've seen? Like, you know, like your traditional Miracle Rogue. Right. But everyone's uh, running, you know, with your Sherizens, your Arcane Giants, trying to get to that big delay. I'm curious if it'll fit into there. 
I, I don't know that it does. Uh, it lets you do some things that maybe Miracle Rogue might want to do, but yeah, I'm not sure. I, uh, it's always fun when we release new cards to see, because we well, have our predictions, okay. and then we see yeah. what the players do, and it often is surprising. Well, okay, so, so, so you're hinting at something, right? Because I think that when everybody thinks Rogue, they think Miracle Rogue. They think Gadgets and Auctioneer. I right. forgot this was a neutral card. I thought it was a Rogue card, right? right. Are there non-Miracle archetypes that you've found in your playtesting with this new set? without spoiling anything that would lose your job? <laughs> right, everything going through my head is, oh, maybe I should spoil the cards. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, Valera is a is the dude Death Knight, obviously, for yes, Rogue. Yes. And she is quite good at making a new style of Rogue. She's also good, potentially, in Miracle Rogue, but I think she's she's got enough potency oh, that she's good I want to know so well. badly. Yeah, I, okay. can't wait. I can't wait for people to we, see her. We are going to get to see a Death Knight today. <laughs> yes. I've been promised one Death Knight. It's true. And that's all I know. All right, hit me with card three. Hit me with it, production. Let's go. Another rare. It is Defile. Deal Warlock. One damage to all minions. If any die, cast this again. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, this card. <laughs> yes. Okay, tell yeah. me about this card, and then I want to react to this card, because I have some strong opinions. Okay, cool. The, so this card's interesting. It's one of the things that we explored uh, kind of when doing the vibe and the story of the set is we're killing the heroes of Warcraft, right? So Gul'dan has his Death Knight version. This is a Warlock card, by the way. Yeah. And they're also getting some of the Death Knight spells and minions in their class as well. Right. So this is a uh, iconic Lich King spell, Defile. And I absolutely love this card. It's incredibly skill testing. So you want to set up basically a domino effect, right? You want to have <laughs> a one health, a two health, a three health, a four health, a five health, however high you can go to yeah. totally wipe out your opponent's board. So it becomes this puzzle of like, what spells do you have in your hand that can set that perfect domino up? Uh, do you trade your two two into their five five wow. so that you now have a three health minion in play and then start it going? Uh, and it's a little mini theme as well, this uh, if your conditions met, cast me again spells that we have in the, in the Knights of the Frozen Throne. Wow. Yeah, I love this card. Two mana, wipe your opponent's board sometimes. Yeah, good. Th this is, okay, <laughs> so I want to tell the very tragic story of me trying to get Lakari Sacrifice decks to work, awesome. okay? So Lakari Sacrifice is a quest that says, don't win, right? That's my experience when I'm playing it. I can't kill anyone. <laughs> I don't know how to build a deck archetype, but I'm starting to get there. I'm starting to get there. I'm no Brian Kibler, right? I'm not getting my over 50% win rates, right but on. what I've found is that it is really a big struggle to try to stay alive in the mm -hmm. first few turns because right. you spent that very first turn on Lakari Sacrifice. Right. And you lose so much momentum with Warlock. Right. And I can imagine that this would fit very nicely in that two drop slot. I mean, a lot of pirate warriors will have one, two, and three cost minions in order right. on the board. Right. I mean, this card's awesome. Yeah, I think, I predict it will make a big impact for exactly what you're talking about. It's early game defense wow. that can also be late game defense as well. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. I've just had an epiphany, and it's not because <laughs> someone in production just held up the words Dreadstone. <laughs> awesome. This, this just, does this break the game if you just right. play Dreadsteed and it casts infinitely? It, the answer is yes. It does break the game. So we've uh, we've made a change to Dreadsteed for a <laughs> while because it, it became, creates a never-ending turn. So Dreadsteed now reads, Death Rattle, at the end of the turn, summon a Dreadsteed. So you will no longer go infinite with cards like this with Dreadsteed. We, oh. we had to make a tough decision. Do we break oh the game? Gosh. Do we not ship to file? Or do we fix Dreadsteed? That, that would have been cool, though, because then Warlocks would only win or draw. Yeah. Well, it was funny when uh, somebody was showing, I'm standing over a computer and they're showing me to file Dreadsteed and it just never ends. And I'm like, hmm, I think we need to fix this. I think this is an issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, this card's awesome. Super interesting. All right, cool. Let's, let's go to card number four. We've done Neutral, Rogue, and Warlock. Cryostasis. Give a minion plus three, plus three, and freeze it. Oh, that's really interesting. This seems yeah. like one of those, you know, Swiss Army Knife style right. spells. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's Shaman, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, there's a lot of spells in Hearthstone where you can target either side of the board. Right, but usually there's an obvious, yeah, I want to fireball my opponent's minions and not my own minions. <laughs> yeah. This card's actually very interesting. You, it actually comes up where you want to do both sides, right? A taunt minion on your side getting plus three, plus three, it might be fine that it can't attack. 
but the fact that it's a lot bigger and can take down their minions could be a great play. Or you need to slow your opponent down, right? Freeze their 5-5, uh, because right. you know you can hex it or do something to it later. Uh, and it also synergizes, people have seen Icebreaker, the new weapon for Shaman, that lets yes. you uh, take out frozen minions. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, so yeah. for any of you who don't know Icebreaker, it's a 1-3 Shaman weapon. Is it two mana, one mana? Two mana. Two mana, okay. Yeah. So it's a two mana, 1-3 weapon, and it says, any minion damaged by this weapon, if it's frozen, kill it. Right. And so, there's only Frost Shock, right. I think, was yeah. the only way to freeze. Right, and there's some neutral from uh, Angoro. We get a one drop that does it, right? So Shaman had just a few tools. So this is one of a few examples of Shaman getting more ways to uh, do freeze. And this is a great example of how when we approached the set, we said, okay, they're becoming Death Knight. How do we, what does that mean for each class? And for yeah. Shaman, we said, okay, they're gonna embrace the Frost Rune, the Frost side of Death Knight. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you'll see a few more uh, uh, Frost Matters, Frost build arounds for Shaman. I can completely imagine this also. Um, there's so many Shaman decks right now that are just trying to do any technique to get the board built and then blow you off, with, or excuse me, right. blow you away. Right. With <laughs> Bloodlust, Matt. Yes, with Bloodlust. <laughs> and so, you know, with those style of archetypes, it makes me think that this could be a very nice way to just delay for just one delay. turn yeah. Yeah. and make sure that you can set up that Bloodlust right. combo. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love this card. It is, like you said, Swiss Army Knife. Got a lot of uses. Yeah. Very cool. We're about to see some uses, actually. Okay. With our next card. Oh. Yeah. What's it gonna <laughs> be? Robbie, whenever another minion is frozen, add a copy of it to your hand. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, let me run this thought by you. All right, okay. all right, ready. Let me, let me just throw this out there. Mm -hmm. So, if you cryostasis an enemy creature, it's mm -hmm. frozen now, it's a little bigger. It's all right, we're gonna take some damage as Shaman, no big deal. All right. We get good RNG on Healing Wave every time. <laughs> and then I run into them with the weapon to kill it, but before I've even killed them, it's in my hand again. That's right, yeah, you've got the copy. And you can do either side of the board, so anybody other than Marabi on either side will get the, you'll get the copy. Huh. Right. That is, well, does that create any sort of weirdness where there's a lot of wish to self-freeze your side of the board? It does, actually, yeah. It does, because you want to get multiple <laughs> copies of your minions. Yes. You're right. Uh, but is it worth it, right? Is it worth yeah. it to freeze your guy to get multiples? And like I was saying, sometimes it is, like with top minions or minions that have, you know, static powers that you want to yeah. get more of, yeah. You it's know, an I, interesting play, yeah. So we, we've seen, you know, about half the cards at this point in time. I actually yeah. want to take a moment to ask a little bit about how you're thinking of the current metagame, right? right? There's there's on the aggro side, you know, we have obviously Pirate Warriors very aggressive. The Hunter decks are starting to get more popularity with the right. Quest Rogue nerf. Mage is also seeming to be out of control these days with secret variants and control. Miracle Rogue's doing all right. I mean, with all these different archetypes, Ungoro has been one of the richest metas yeah. that I think is yeah. actually maybe the richest meta that we've seen since Star right. of Hearthstone. Yeah. I mean, like, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about the Bloodlust Shamans, I'm thinking about Evolved Shamans, I'm thinking about Elemental Shamans, and this just seems different from all of those. I th yeah, exactly. And that's one of the tough things, too, right? Because you, when you know a meta and you see a new card, it's always yeah. hard to go, okay, could this create a new archetype that I haven't seen before? Yeah, and yeah. I, and that's my hope. That's what I think is going to happen, is this Frost Mage could be something that, uh, you know, creates a new style that we're not currently, it's not currently part of the meta, yeah. which is one of the huge goals with any set, and I'm really excited about it happening for Shaman with Frozen Throne, right, all the Death Knight heroes doing that for new archetypes too, so yeah, it's always great, and like you said, Angoro's done a phenomenal job yeah, of that, yeah, hopefully yeah. we can add to that in really cool ways, with Knights of the Frozen Throne. Yeah, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at our next piece here. I understand it's going to be a little Murabi gameplay, so yeah. this is oh. <laughs> Oh, this yeah, is... so this is a big uh, <laughs> the water elemental. She uh, we spoiled her earlier. Whenever she damages a minion, she freezes it. Be a cool oh, she's a new man. Well. <laughs> so your shaman deck has Antonitis <laughs> in its own. Oh. talking about freezing your own taunt minion, right? Can be a good play. Right. <laughs> Elements guide me. Oh, that's a pretty good turn. You could have frozen Antonitis again if you wanted to to get another copy of them, which is pretty insane. What? <laughs> yeah. It, double stack freezing up, yeah, effect? Yeah, double stacking will actually work with Marabi. 
Okay. So pretty okay. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pretty All crazy right. combinations are now possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, there's an increasingly large number of just take from the other person. You know, Rogue's obviously snatching a whole lot of cards from the opponent. And right. Priest always has. And yeah. now, now Shaman Shaman gets too. a little access to it too. Yeah. yeah. And, but in uh, a way that's like very controlled for both sides. They very much so see what the risks are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Much more controlled. You're right. And, uh, and without spoiling it, you know, Shaman might be getting another freeze card too in the set, which will be perfect. Oh, they, they might. They might not, but they <laughs> might. All right, let's go on to our next card. <laughs> Eternal Servitude, four man. Discover a friendly minion that died this game, summon it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, so this is Priest, by the way. Yes. That's the bet because again, we always ask, does this work for Shadow Priest? Does this work for Ramp Druid? Right. Can I do a crazy combo with this? Right, right. This feels nice. This yeah, feels for, like a nice card. One of my favorite archetypes, especially for Priest, is the uh, is Resurrect. And of course, yeah. you know, running Barnes, running a lot of fun uh, uh, synergies yeah, with yeah. it. But you get a random minion from that. And sometimes you have two or three minions that have died, so you don't always get the minion you want. Eternal Servitude is perfect for that because now you can yeah. control it in a way. You can get that perfect minion back. In terms of this set, yeah. What are the resurrect effects that are still in the game? Onyx Bishop right. is still there, and I don't think yeah, resurrect. good old yeah. two mana resurrect is right. in. Yeah, so now you can run. Yeah, you can run four in your deck. Uh, two of these, nice. two bishops. Yeah, so we've got uh, once again to tease something. I think we have one of the best resurrect targets of all time coming at priest as well. Knights of Frozen Throne. I think a lot of people will agree with that. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> don't get to spoil it today, but uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But soon to come. See, yeah. I gotta say, there, there's, yeah. there's, this has been a slightly unusual card reveal cycle because of the fact that there have been so many cards that have been released in the last week, mm -hmm. like so many. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm excited to go back to you know my little streaming computer after this and kind of do the mix and match and put cool. cards next to each other yeah. and see what's up. All right, next card. Let's do it. <clears throat> Apprentice. Your opponent's spells cost one more. Oh, this is like a very interestingly statted and costed card. Yeah, yeah, she's interesting. She's basically the reverse of Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, uh, I actually love the VO on her. And if you remember Sorcerer's Apprentice, someday I want to be just like you. Yeah, her VO is uh, someday you're going to be just like me. I see. She means she's going to kill you and turn you into uh. death knight. Pretty fun. <laughs> uh, pretty dark. She says it in a super creepy way. Pretty cool. Uh, she's. She's very interesting. For people who play Sorcerer's Apprentice, right, it's often best when you're playing a lot of spells all at once, right? And the reverse is true here against, right, Miracle Rogue. Decks that want to play coin or lots of uh, cheap spells late, she stacks up and creates a lot yeah. of value. Uh, in addition to, hey, I know you have Brawl, so I'm going to throw her out so you can't do a turn five Brawl, right? That's also strategic, but she's very good against the spell-based decks. You know, I'm curious. The, I mean, a, a lot of the mage decks right now are built around burn, uh, you know, doing miracle work with Primordial Glyph. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the secret decks that are trying to get yep. big tempo turns, but there hasn't really been a lot of just tempo mage that's not secret-based. Is this the sort of card that you've been seeing crop up? I've even seen some other cards that feel like they'd be really nice for tempo decks. I don't remember the name of it, but the mage card that puts a mirror image into your hand and is a 2-6. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll see. I don't I don't know. I, I'm always curious to see how the players do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see. Yeah, because Duped Apprentice also seems very fragile at 3-2 three, for 3. Right, yeah. I think it is, yeah, it's more of a kind of a, you know, sometimes called tech card, yeah. right? Is the meta right for this, right? And if Miracle Rogue was super popular, yeah. you know, her odds of being part of the meta go way up. Yeah, and I mean, this isn't, you know, it's, it's not like a blunt tool, like your opponent cannot cast zero or one mana right, spells, right? right? It's just like a very soft, like just creates a new problem. Right. This yeah. is a really interesting card. All right, yeah. I'm ready for the next one. Give me the cards, man. Hit me with them cards. It's Valinar. Huh. If your deck contains no four cost cards, gain lifesteal and taunt. Yes. This is one of the most chill legendaries. <laughs> this just seems like a really nice value chill. legendary in a lot of decks. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, funny use words. Uh, yeah, so uh. this, this completes the. Uh, the, the Blood Prince uh, Council. So we've got three Blood Princes, one at two, one at three, one at four, that all have this uh, first part of their text. You cannot run any cards of their cost in the deck to get their 
benefit. Uh, it's a phenomenal right minion if you meet its requirements to get both taunt and life steal together yeah. on four cost four four. Right, it's perfect because life steal hey to force them to have to attack it so that you're more guaranteeing that you get the life steal to go off. Very right. good, uh, but is it worth it? And, I, and this is the type of card I love where it's a pretty big restriction. It's not Reno level, but it is an impact on your deck. Right. Right. What does it cost? You know, Hunter versus what does it cost? Druid. Right. Druid yeah. can't run swipe. That's a pretty big deal, right? Maybe <laughs> Paladin has a <laughs> yes, a lot of four cost right, cards. Yeah. yeah, so, but yeah, and this mm. completes the. Uh, these are all three of the princes. So uh, what I'm right. hoping to see is, can somebody actually run all three of these princes? I mean, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. No two, three, or four cost. Sounds insane. Sounds impossible. But yeah, I'm sure somebody will try. All you have like to you. do is win the one game. That's, <laughs> I want that's a game. all I yeah, need. Yeah. I I I have, a, <laughs> I have a knack for trying to come up with the worst possible ideas. And then just not letting them go. Yeah, it's great. Right. Awesome. It's really, but you know, this the thing that's interesting about this is that this is just not a an extreme or crazy effect. This just to me says if there are token druids, if there are pirate warriors that right. are getting a lot of small creatures on the board in your right. hand, you don't need to run a lot of four slot cards. You can put this in, and it's and it's pretty reliable. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, you know, we haven't talked a lot about arena mm -hmm. yet. I mean, is this this seems like a little bit maybe of a dangerous choice early on in arena draft. Yeah. But yes. yeah, these I guys mean, are really tough in arena actually. Yeah. Because if you get them early, can you still avoid four? And obviously if you get them late, do you already have fours? But yeah. if somebody did this in arena, it'd be quite the payoff. Yeah, yeah. This seems like a Yeah. A nice card. Maybe maybe you want a little more stats in arena? I don't know. I'm not the yeah. best at arena. Either way, let's do the next one. To the next chord. Ah, yes, warrior. Dead man's hand. Whoa! Oh, fatigue yes. warrior, welcome yes. to the show. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, this. <laughs> oh, Matt, thank you. This card is awesome. Yeah, this is oh, interesting. It's, wow. Uh, it's reminiscent of Gang Up, right? In the terms of, hey, these cards are kind of cheating in a way. I get more copies than I'm yeah. supposed to have of stuff. Yeah. And when you mention wow. fatigue, one of the interesting things this does is if you have two in your hand, you play one, one gets put back in your deck, you still have one in your hand, you draw the next one, you play it again. Wow. So kind of like Druid can do with Jade Druid, you can go infinite. So uh, oh, yeah, it's wow. pretty interesting. Those high cost legendaries or you know arm up cards. Those cold them again light again oracles. Again. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. You've already got a deck in mind. It sounds like yeah. Yeah. People. Yeah. I think the the way that I'll build the deck is I'll put in two Dead Man's Hands. I'll put in two Cold Light Oracles, and then I'll autofill. <laughs> and I'm ready. It's time to go then. I'll watch that. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the build. So we, I think we've covered every class except for Druid at this point, and Paladin, I want to say. Right. Okay, yes. So I, I think I think we're going to see either a Druid or a Paladin card next. Okay, I think I've got that right. Prediction. Yeah. Have we seen Hunter? Maybe we haven't seen Hunter. I don't remember. <laughs> Let's go to the next card. I shouldn't make these kinds I've of seen cards. Him. Spreading Plague, summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt. If your opponent has more minions, Another cast again if you meet the condition card. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Mad place. Yes. So yeah, this is interesting. This is a if ever there's a comeback card, right, this is it. It's it's unleash the scarabs. It's like it's it, uh, exactly, yeah. And and there there was the druid legendary that says Death Rattle summon the taunt minions that died this game. Right. Yeah. Hadronox, very good with this. Oh my What's well, actually gosh. interesting, you, you, in the building the deck, do you run both Spreading Plagues? Because you don't want to only get 1-5s, because you have some other amazing taunt minions you can bring back, but you want some to make sure you're getting seven guys back with Hadronox. So it's quite interesting in how you, how you manage all yeah. that in, uh, in Druid. Yeah. Man, that is, that is potent. I mean, we've yeah. already seen how nice it is to have Tar Creepers in control decks. I mean, obviously the fact that it's a 3-5 with taunt for three right. is great, but just five health right. is annoying to right. get through. Right. And this true. is many five healths. Right. This is up to seven five That's healths. That's true. It's 35 I'm amazing. Healths. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and I understand we have some gameplay footage yeah. of the scarabs. Oh no, don't, are you, are we, are we gonna kill the snow penguin? Don't oh, tell no. me there's more than that. 
is it going to end or is it going to cut off? Because if it does, that's like what local news does, right? They, they show the two cars coming at each other and they go more at six. Is it too, it's, I think it's too brutal to show the pinball side. Oh my gosh. And then what's going to happen? This is so awful. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, hit him with the wow. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe that sort of behavior is being encouraged on air. All right, let's spread it. Let's spread the scarabs. Right, so kind of the perfect scenario for the guard here. Oh, yes, yeah, the hunters that run seven copies. <laughs> and this kind of shows off the timing of Druid. They're going to abandon the, the mammal like panther and bear. Yeah. And, and Druid, uh, Malfurion has embraced the Nature Death Nightbird. Nature will rise sex. against you. more cars that do this as well. Oh my gosh. Wow. So we don't actually slaughter. And they're That's okay. The penguins. Yeah, in fact, they all afterwards they all hung out, had a party, shook yeah. hands. Each penguin fell in love with the scarab opposite it, <laughs> right. and they all got married. Yeah, Isn't that's that how great? that ended. That's exactly yeah. how that ended. That's... But yeah, like you said, thirty-five health worth of taunt, pretty good for five. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I I really really love the mechanic of if your opponent has more minions, cast this again. Cool. Or if if trigger happens, cast this again. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And setting it up right. How do you? Who do you trade off? Right. What, yeah, yeah. Do you skip a turn of playing minions to set it up better? Right. What is the right time to play a card? Right. Skipping to play oh, yeah. minions is a tough choice, but sometimes you're correct with cards. Like and those this. are some of my favorite cards. Always. Cool. I mean, there's there's you know cards like a piloted shredder. If it's turn four, you play a piloted right. shredder. Or Basically always. Yeah. In times of yore, the Chillwind <laughs> Yeti. Right. When people thought the most OP thing in the universe <laughs> right. was a turn one Chillwind Yeti. Yeah. I mean, those are just great on-curve cards. Right. Those are important in any card game, but this is the sort of thing that I just love. Those really interesting, choicey things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's also, uh, I love the kind of what we've explored here with the different, like, what does it mean to be a Death Knight Mount version of Mount Fury, yeah, yeah. right? So the insect stuff. Uh, kind of a funny story when we were exploring the naming for this. The uh, Deathstalker Rexar was the name we yeah, picked yeah. for Rexar, which is a ton of fun. Uh, we were naming it, we're in a group with uh, Brode, and uh, some of the names for he pitched were uh, for Gul'dan. We're like, okay, what would be a good name? He's like, oh, how about Gul Dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, does he mean that? He looked Wait, serious. Did, did he not burst into laughter afterwards? <laughs> right, he did not burst into laughter afterwards. So I'm like trying to figure out, like, how do I react Wait, to Wait, so this? he says Gul it's really funny, and then sits still, <laughs> right. not laughing. Right, and so we didn't end up naming <laughs> Malfury in this, but his name for Malfury, I think it was him, uh, Malfurious, which I love, but also, yeah. also I was like, okay, it's like, this, ha -ha, is, this is wait, amazing, is but... It, this right, is exactly. intended to be a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. So pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. All right, well, <laughs> I understand that now we are about to hop to the next chord. Might be the last one. Third one, but we don't really know yet. Oh, the Death Knight Hero. Lich yes. Jaina. Yeah. She's Damn. mega powerful. All elementals for the rest of the game, any that you've already played on board, any in your deck, all have lifesteal. Pretty cool. Wow. Yes. What she comes with a free elemental as well. Yeah, what's what's the hero power? So the hero power we're also going to get to see uh, actually generates more elementals. Perfect. All right. Her, yeah, oh, look at me with the setup question. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Frost, Lich, Jaina. Deal one image if this kills a minion. What? Yes. What? <laughs> Matt, please. Do not fear. Oh. Fear so right, you get the five armor. Wield it. And this hero power for her. So wow. a lot of potential. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of, you know, Hearthstone always has great UI referencing. When you hover over Jaina, uh, does she say all your elementals have all your elementals have lifesteal? She does it as a, uh, a battle cry, so it's not there anymore. Or a I see. Heroes does it. But I assume but it's it shows up on all the minions. Exactly. Right. So that's how you know. Yeah, really good. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Pretty crazy, yeah. So it's very, very different from a lot of the traditional control mage archetypes because you know a lot of them right. are relying on uh, just bursting down with spells. Right. Traditional freeze mage uses you know a lot of pyroblasts, alexstrasza to set their health to fifteen. Right. Maybe some antonitis fireballs go off, but this is the finisher of just endless board building and just slowly exactly. wearing down. Yeah, and I'm curious how it changes those control decks, right? Because her by herself not only adds some control, some board control. She's also a finisher, right? That that infinite, potentially infinite uh, amount of water liminals with life steal. Right. And it also creates a lot of interesting situations. And in what do I run to make sure I'm going to trigger it? Do I run one health minions of my own? Because it can the hero power can target your own minions. Uh, I want to run maybe two polymorphs, right? That's a guaranteed one health minion to generate more water liminals. So it's interesting how it changes the deck. 
play control Gosh, to best so take advantage of her. Because she on her, she kind of on her own can finish the game. Right? Yeah, the, the, these specific reveals are sort of like, you know, mind bending. Cool. Because I, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna do what probably most people are gonna do and say, what deck was I playing yesterday? Does this card help the deck right, I was playing right. yesterday? And I mean, I look at this and I'm, I think it needs its own consideration. Right. Uh, you know. Yeah, is it a totally new type of deck? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something else that the uh, that all of the Death Knight heroes come with that I'm pretty excited about is they all have their own new set of emotes, as well. Oh. It's pretty fun. Which we get to show. <laughs> you're shivering. Are you afraid? So you're, that you. I can't potential. believe you put that in. <laughs> To the class that has ice block, you put, you're right. shivering, are you yes. afraid? You <laughs> monsters. <laughs> so you're taunt, yeah, you're building Thank taunt. You. Oh, wow. Rub it in a little bit. Wow, we gotta it's hear gone this up again. With these By my frozen heart. By my frozen heart. That's yeah, fine, that's over very neutral. Bit. Yeah, that's good. A fatal mistake. Oof. Every Very delicate. Delicate. Bow to your queen. Bow to your queen. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, if, if, you, if you kill the... Uh, Enemy hero does it summon a water does elemental? Summon water elemental? It doesn't. Oh, that sounds like we a can glitch. Fix that. You got to summon that one water elemental. <laughs> Make them watch it <laughs> before the game ends. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a little mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, those emotes. I need to have something to go along that's with also it. Mean. Yeah. Yeah. Death knights are mean. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, is is, cool. is this was this the last card? Is this the finisher? Is this the end? Yes, we finished okay. on the death knight hero. Pretty exciting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is. That is a really interesting set of cards. Cool. Yeah, that is. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Now I gotta ask. So we we haven't yet seen all of the cards. There's going to be more reveals and reveal streams and right. all that sort of info and stuff. Uh, you know, the expansion's coming out mid August ish. And I'm curious, what are some of the things that haven't been revealed that you're really excited about? Not specifically. Right. But just like right. what kinds of things. Can't is there spoil. a specific legendary? Is, yeah. is there one class's Death Knight that hasn't been revealed that you're really pumped about? Yeah, I'm I'm pumped about a bunch of them. I uh, so next week, by the way, is is Death Knight Hero Week. So seven more. The remaining seven Death Knight heroes are all going to be revealed. Uh, super exciting. I'm I'm really excited about a bunch of them. Gul'dan is amazing. Yeah. I'm curious if he's going to make it. I love playing it. It's probably the deck I'm going to build first. Cool, dangerous. Super fun. Cool, dangerous. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, totally awesome. Uh, yeah, and we've also, it's really fun, people may know this, uh, the prologue for the missions, which are free, is going to, winning that is gonna give you a free random Death Knight Legendary Hero, so everybody's gonna get one for free. This is a good policy. Fantastic, yes. Yeah, I mean, I love the recent yeah. changes that have been going yeah. on with legendaries, cool. you know, yeah. like guaranteeing, no repeats, and now, and the prologue is like, just log in and play and it's free. Log in, play, free, right. Uh, you, you'll probably die. Awesome. But you'll probably also win. We'll see how it goes. That's yeah. great. That's, that's yeah. the best part about the single player style campaign yeah. missions that you have is that you can Just lose 50 again. times yeah. and win once, and you're there you go. There you yeah. have it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Matt, is there anything else we need to know? Uh, yeah. The Just... <laughs> uh, yeah. Aww. I mean, that's. Aww. <laughs> Welcome back, Snow Flipper Penguin. Right. And he's, he's on his ice thing. Hey! This is the sleeper of the set, probably gonna be the best card of the set. People I know. Like, How I'm, you I'm gonna build a Weasel Tunneler Snow Flipper Penguin deck. It's gonna be sick. Cool, man. This is a ton of fun. It was a blast. Yeah, I'd awesome. like to say thank you so much yeah, for you. sharing all this with us today. And uh, that's it. This is done. We're over. What's gonna happen now is I'm going to run off to a streaming setup across the street. And I'm gonna be reviewing the cards that were revealed today as well as some of the previously revealed cards and try to just figure out how the hell the meta is going to work, which is, I know my <laughs> predictions are going to be wrong because the, the degree to which these are creating different experiences is pretty, pretty exciting, I gotta say. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, from us here at Blizzard, I'm Sean Plott and this is Matt Place. Goodbye, you're Bye. great. Play more video Thanks. games. Yes.